confession, I have been traveling more for work this last year than normal, and it is kind of hard on the family. So today I'm going to be telling you my tips for how to balance out relationships and work travel so that you can really thrive in your career, do the things you got to do, and at the same time still know that when you're coming back home, everything's going to be good. I'm Amy Walker, small business strategist, professional speaker, and author. And I love having this channel where we give you the tips that you need to be able to balance your business life and also balance your family life and your relationships. So if you haven't done it yet, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so that you get notified every time we release new content. All right, y'all, today we are talking about relationships and travel and how do you balance work travel with wanting to have you know strong relationships with your partner, with your kids, with your family. It's not always easy. When I first started in business travel, we kind of had this, we'll travel once a quarter type agreement. And then you get more demands because when you do well, people want more of you. And so then it started into like, you know, more like every other month, and then it was like every month, and then it was a couple times a month, and then it was like, wow. This is a lot of travel for the fact that we have a really demanding home life and a really demanding family life as well. And so it has been challenging. Like this past year, I spent more time traveling um, than I had before. And I also, some of my rules that I have, like I had a rule for travel that I would make sure I was home on Sundays and that didn't happen every trip this year. And so I wanna share with you from our experience some of the things that have worked and some of the things that have been hard. So in this video, first of all, I'm gonna be real transparent with what are the challenges on your relationship? Like what is the strain that it places on your relationship when you are on the road a good bit of the time? Um, second, I'm gonna give you what we have learned and figured out this year through trial and error and good trips and bad trips. Um, but I'm gonna give you my six strategies that we use to keep our relationships thriving and, and help us to be able to balance the travel. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you some apps that are actually really helpful with coordination so that you don't feel so disconnected and discombobulated when you are traveling. All right, so let's get started. Traveling and having a relationship is put some strain on the relationship when, I mean, first of all, you're apart, so, you know, that puts distance between you. It's harder to communicate. It's harder to connect. Um, intimacy is not really happening while you're on the road. So like there is this natural disconnect that occurs. But for us, that part is surmountable. Um, the part that is actually harder is that it dumps a lot of the responsibilities that I would take care of onto my husband. So it it's a two parent gig to run this household. We have five kids. Um, they're involved in a lot of activities. Every single night, there's multiple people who need to be multiple places. So when I'm gone, it puts a real disruption factor in. Um, I also have my younger kids are sometimes easier for me to manage. Um, like there's just something about little kids that they want their mom and they like to listen to their mom. And when their mom's away, they're like, mm, I don't have to do anything that anybody else says because my mom's not here. Um, and I'm not saying that with any disrespect to my husband. I'm just saying there's something that happens until they're like, you know, 10 and then after 10 it goes away, but there's like this mom connection. Um, so anyway, we got that going on and it really, that it's, it's hard to manage. The other thing is that for me, I don't like missing things. And so I, I, I hate when I miss a concert or a spelling bee or a game or you know something like that. I don't like missing them. And so then I have this expectation that I need my husband to record everything while I'm gone. And sometimes he can't record them because it doesn't li like life doesn't always go according to plan A. So it definitely can create some friction in the relationship if you don't have a really good game plan in place. So I wanna share with you the six things that we have really learned make a big difference during the season of business travel. 
So tip number one, this is something that I did from the very beginning was when I made this commitment. So what happened is I took on a new client and I took on a big contract with this client and it was going to involve travel. And when I made that, um, before I made the commitment, I discussed it with my husband and I asked for his support. And he said yes that he would support me. Now that was important for two reasons. Number one, because if he would have said no, I wouldn't have taken the contract um, because I, I needed his support. I knew that I was putting more on his plate and I needed him to be able to choose in. And the second thing is when we have had sticky points along the way, we've needed to be able to go back to that and say, remember you said you were gonna support me. And, um, and it helps us to kind of smooth out some of the challenges. The second tip is to discuss how does travel support your overall goals as a couple? I mean, we together, we have a direction, we know what we want in our life, we talk about this on a regular basis, we're committed to the same end result. So when we throw something like increasing travel into the mix, we have to be on the same page with how this ultimately supports what we want in our lives and what we want as our couple's goals. If it doesn't, you're gonna have a lot of friction over this travel all the way through. And so for us, we had to have conversations about things like this, taking this contract and working with this client allows us to be able to um, like turn the volume down in other areas of our business, which when I'm home gives me more availability with the family and more availability with my husband. And then when I'm on the road, it's obviously less, but overall we felt like that, you know, we were up here and it would allow us to come more like this and take some burden off. And so it did feel like it was in alignment with our overall goals. Um, and it also is something that it's a positioning step that helps us get to where we really want to go next. So it was an alignment and that was one of the reasons why we said yes. And I feel like you can do hard, like if you're a good, strong couple, you can do hard things together as long as it's taking you where you wanna go. But if one or both of you feel like this like season of travel and being on the road a lot is not in alignment with where you ultimately wanna be, then my recommendation is that you start looking for other ways to accomplish what you want to accomplish that allows you to be home and be together more. So if, it is a, if it's something that's gonna transition, it's gonna help you get where you wanna go, go for it. If it's not, find another way. That's the great part about entrepreneurship is there's a thousand different ways to be successful. Find a way that really works for you and what you want long-term. Number three, discuss realistic expectations really have that discussion before I started with travel and uh, it created some extra strain on on things and so um, I'll give you an example of some unrealistic expectations uh, I had an expectation that I wanted to come home and have the house be clean but guess what I didn't always leave the house clean so that was an unrealistic expectation um, I had an expectation that like everybody was going to get to all the things that they needed to and the kids wouldn't miss anything while I was gone. But it was taking two parents in order to get everyone where they needed to go. That was an unrealistic expectation. But I did have some expectations that I felt like were realistic. I wanted to come home and I wanted people to be happy. Now I know that we can't control everybody's happiness, but uh, hear me on this one. Um, I didn't want, I didn't like when I would come home and it was like my husband was really frustrated and overwhelmed um, because five kids by himself and um, then he was grumpy with the kids and then the kids were grumpy with each other and then I would come home and it, ever, and it was like I had to put out all these emotional fires. That I didn't feel like was fair for me. So what happened is as we started talking about realistic expectations, what we realized is if we let go of the other unrealistic ones, we could achieve that one. So if he didn't have to try to get the house clean and keep it clean, and if he could, you know, like take the kids out for dinner while I was gone instead of cooking every single night, and if he could, um, uh, let, like say no to some things like, you know what, you're not gonna be able to go to that 
practice this week because this kid's got a game. And if he could let go of some of those other things that, and knew that the number one thing that I wanted was I wanted to be able to come home and like people were happy and they'd had a positive experience while I was gone. And then I would help pick up some of the other messes. As long as we could have that, then we were both good. So setting those realistic expectations helped us to be more successful at me knowing that when I come back, sometimes I come back and the house is clean. Um, sometimes I come back and it's not. Sometimes I come back and everybody got where they needed to be and sometimes they don't. Um, but I know that I'm not gonna come home to everybody being upset and then I feel like I've got all these emotional fires to put out because I need to know while I'm gone that everyone's okay on the home front in order for me to be able to fully plug in while I'm there. Okay, tip number four is to have a coordination meeting before you go. I hold a lot of information inside of my head, I just do, and so um, sometimes, I, I, but my husband doesn't. He needs to have everything written down and he needs to talk through like what is happening at each thing. And so um, when in the beginning when I would just kind of go and I'd be like, well, it's on the calendar. It just, it wasn't clicking for him because I remember the story behind what's on the calendar and he would just look at what's on the calendar and be like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do for that. So now we have a coordination meeting. So before I go out of town, we just sit down and we talk through all the things on the calendar. Um, I tell them everything that I know about it. Uh, if there's any, like sometimes I'll, we'll have some questions and so I'll help by sending emails um, to coaches or teachers and asking what's going on. So we have the full details so that he really is prepared to manage things while I'm gone. Tip number five, plan quality time around your travel. So your relationships will be solid if you will take time to really connect before you go and take time to really connect when you get home. And sometimes that's challenging because before you leave, you're like trying frantically to get prepared for the trip. And then when you get home, you're tired from the trip. But if you'll just take some time to connect before and after, it feeds your relationship, which helps you feel better as the traveler and also helps your spouse feel better as the one who is left at home. Tip number six is to set up your communication expectations um, because Otherwise, you'll have one partner expecting more conversation and being frustrated because they're not getting it, and another partner feeling like the other person's always nagging them for communication that they can't give. So set up that communication expectation. Um, my husband and I, when I travel, I'm usually travel because I, I live in the East Coast, Eastern time zone, so I'm usually traveling somewhere that's earlier. So what I'll do is the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I call him and that's when we connect for the day. Um, he's busy while I'm gone and so he doesn't have a lot of time to talk and I also don't have a lot of time to talk because when, when I travel, I'm traveling for events and so these events are long and so they kind of last the whole day. Um, that is our set standard. Now, sometimes we do get to connect again at the end of my day but I'll just send him a text and say, hey, I just got done, are you still up? And there's no expectation. He doesn't have to wait up to talk to me. If it happens, it happens. Sometimes it's short, sometimes it's not. Um, but that's our, that's our standard of communication while I'm gone. And having that just understood and out there makes things to be a lot easier. All right, so I also mentioned at the beginning that I was gonna give you some apps that help this process to be smoother. There's two, Google Calendar, because you can calendar sync and you can share and invite each other to events. And so anything that's on my calendar, he can see. Um, so he knows, and, and anything that he puts on the calendar, I can see, so that way the calendar is always in sync. Because I'm telling you, if you go out of town and not he doesn't have all the details, he or she doesn't have all the details, it's going to be a problem. So keep it real simple that way. The second app is Marco Polo. It's a video messaging app. Um, one of the things when you're traveling, sometimes you may, depending on time zones, you may not be able to have a voice-to-voice -voice conversation, but you still wanna be able to connect, you still wanna be able to see each other. And so Marco Polo allows you to make each other video messages and then send the video messages back and forth. So even if we can't be FaceTiming at the exact same time, we can still Marco Polo and send each other messages so it helps keep the, the connection there even though we're in different locations. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. How often do you travel? Go ahead and leave it in the message for me. And if you would like to join a community of like-minded entrepreneurs, head over to our private Facebook group, The CEO Spot. I can't wait to see you there for questions and engagement and just getting to be a part of a tribe of other like-minded entrepreneurs. 
Has this been helpful for you? If this video has been helpful, here's what you can do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this with other entrepreneurs that are in your community. Go ahead and post it on your Facebook page or share that link on, in, on LinkedIn or Instagram. We love your support. Thank you so much for being a part of what we do here. And I hope that I get to hear from you about your business wins very soon. Thanks.